We are now approximately six weeks out from a decompression of the proximal tibial nerve in the calf at the soleal sling. She had previously had a decompression of the tibial nerve in the tarsal tunnel, which includes the tibial nerve followed by the medial plantar nerve, the lateral plantar nerve, and the two calcaneal branches being the inferior calcaneal nerve and the medial calcaneal nerve. Um, that was done uh, almost a year ago. And after this first tarsal tunnel release, can you tell me what your symptoms, what improved and what did not improve? After the first tarsal tunnel, I had numbness in the bottom of my foot and a lot of tingling. And then I had a very sharp pain going up my ankle to my calf. Okay, and now some people say, well, that sounds like tarsal tunnel syndrome. What were the symptoms that you had before the tarsal tunnel release, which led us to do that operation for you? What were those symptoms before the tarsal tunnel release? Um, I had a lot of um, problem walking. Um, my foot was swell up as soon as I put it down. And Did then the numbness was going from... On the bottom of my foot to my toes. So before surgery, the reason why I did this operation is because you did have some numbness in the sole of your foot, correct? Yes. So we did a tarsal tunnel release, decompressing those five nerves that we talked about. And did your symptoms change at all? Did it change 10%, 50%, 60%? What, what did you say it changed? Um, after the tarsal tunnel surgery, it changed about 50%. About 50%. So we're kind of happy with 50%, but 50% wasn't happy for her. Um, because she still has symptoms, and you heard her. She had uh, pain. She had persistent numbness, persistent tingling from her heel into the toes. She had persistent or new discomfort from the ankle going this direction. And we waited many months for this nerve to recover. So you could wait up to a year as this nerve recovers, a millimeter a day, an inch a month, or approximately eight inches, eight months. Um, and we did wait quite some time. But at the same time, the patient had tremendous pain over the tibial nerve at the uh, soleal sling, which is um, just behind in the calf muscle itself. And this is a secondary compression site. So <clears throat> we could have done this simultaneously with the tarsal tunnel, but we didn't know if this really needed to be done. We call that a double crush. The patient has a crush here, pinched, and the crush down here. So we thought this would be enough. Um, she got decent relief, 50%, but was still having problems. And so we went up here, we released this about six weeks ago. And now what happens when I tickle your foot down here? What has changed in the past six weeks? It tickles. It tickles, okay. <laughs> There's no numbing pain. There's no shooting pain from, the, um, from my ankle to my calf. And everything is just healing really well. It's just a little inflamed because of the boot. Other than that, it's great. No very, more pain. Very good. So this is something that we always look for in patients who don't have 85, 90, 100% relief after a tarsal tunnel release. We always come upstream to look at the proximal tibial nerve at the soleal sling. So if there's a patient out there who's had a tarsal tunnel release in the past who either A, did not get better, or B, had residual symptoms, then I would encourage you to ask about the tibial nerve at the soleal sling because there could be what's called a double crush. Thank you.